Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Odo Sendaidukai and in this video I show you the Bitwig ladder filter. It would be great if you would leave me a like and a subscription, for that you may keep the bell, but let's get started. From the Wikipedia, the following section. The Moog ladder was the first voltage control low pass filter of its kind. Taking its structure from the George Campbell's work with telephone systems at AT&T. With a slope of 24 decibel per, per octave and an adjustable resonance peak at the cutoff point, it offered its own pleasing overdrive tones as the signal was attenuated, adding a distinctive fat character to various bass lines and lead sounds. Moog's patent was uh, Moog's patents for the first filter was granted in 1969, shortly after the release of the Switch on Bach album. Switch on Bach is the first studio album by the America com American composers Wendy Carlos, recorded with a Moog or Moog synthesizer and released it in October 1968. An additional interesting fact is that another very well-known ladder filter is the diode filter of the Roland TB303. Despite it being a myth then that uh, this is an 18 dB per octave filter, Roland clarified that it is also a 24 dB octave per octave filter. The links are in the video description. But um, now to the Bitwig ladder filter. I will first explain all sections of the filter and then at the end I will give a, f a few sound examples to listen to, which are available as chapter markers and can be accessed directly. Um, the filter has not only the standard cutoff and resonant controls, but also various filter types with their variants, some modulation options and of course a pre and a post gain on board. About the filter types. Um, with the filter types, there are four low pass and four high pass filters with different slopes. Short explanation what slope is. The slope per octave simply describes how fast from the cutoff position the volume of the following frequencies, right or left, are lowered until theoretically absolute silence, like a fade out for example. This is expressed in a so-called poles. One pole is a 6 decibel per octave, two poles are 12, three poles are 18, and four poles are 24 decibel per octave, and so on. Um, slopes are sometimes also called steepness or slew. Okay, but now back to the topic. Then there are two band pass filters with 12 and 24 dB slope per octave. Then um, a peak filter, um, which, um, uh, which with the help of the resonance at the location of the cutoff creates a peak, thus a boost and amplification. No resonance, no peak, a lot resonance, strong peak. If you turn the cutoff, the peak will be shifted through the frequency spectrum. And then a notch filter, which can be used to cut a hole in the frequency spectrum at the cutoff point. If the resonance control is turned up, the notch gets smaller and smaller because um, this is a Mock letter filter, the notch peaks at a certain point. And finally, there are three filters where high pass and low pass filters, which different slopes are combined. In the end, there are very special band pass filters where the frequency at the cutoff positions of the high pass and the low pass can be amplified.
In this example, I used a four pole filter instead of a three pole filter because the letter has letter filter has a three pole three pole low pass filter, but the EQ Plus only have a four pole um, low pass filter. Okay, then the gain. With the gain at the bottom over here. Um, the input signal can be boosted and the output signal can be lowered again and vice versa. This, is, um, this not only opens up the possibility of amplifying very quiet signals, because with the synthesizer you can't just put a tool device in front of it, but also to overdrive the filter by boosting the input signal and thus provoke certain effects, mostly in combination with the resonance. And before the signal leaves the filter, it can be lowered to a normal volume level again, for example, like this. So um, I would ask you to pause for a moment and leave me a like and as a small appreciation. If you like the content, then subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to miss anything in the future, then press the bell as well. <laughs> that would be nice and a very fair gesture and I would um, be very happy about it. Thank you very much. So now to the modulators. Now there are three modulators with the possibility to modulate in a positive direction and in a negative direction. These are the ADSR, the LFO and the envelope follower. Um, the respective detail sections become active as soon as the modulators are turned in the positive or negative direction. If I turn the ADSR right now, the section of the ADSA becomes active. In the zero position it becomes deactive as well the LFO and the envelope follower. About the ADS ADSR, the ADSR modulator as said positive and uh, negative adjustable refers to the settings on the top right and requires an input in the form of notes or MIDI. So there must be notes in the arrangements or in the clips or in uh, it is played live with a synthesizer. In the upper left area of the ADSR section, a yellow dot then lights up when a MIDI notes when MIDI notes arriving. So as soon as notes are present, the ADSR envelope settings move the cutoff of the filter. The velocity setting controls how much this envelope affects the movement of the cutoff. In other words, how much the cutoff is moved. So if I have a lot of velocity setting here, there's a lot of movement with the ADSR envelope. And if there's not uh, uh, no velocity, there's only little move with the ADSR. So and um, as MIDI input, another source from the project can be specified as well. So if I add here another uh, instrument track, for example, instrument two, I can add the input from instrument two um, so that the sound still comes from um, this track, but another track moves the ADSR envelope and thus also controls the cutoff of the filter. This can also lead to interesting results rhythmic, uh, rhythmically as um, can be heard in the um, audio examples. So now about the LFO. In the area of the LFO frequency oscillator, there is also an LED in the upper, uh, in the upper right, uh, no, in the upper left <laughs> corner. So, however, this does not show any MIDI notes, but is a visual feedback how fast this LFO oscillates. And still the LFO can react to notes with the R over here, which stands for retrigger, with which the LFO is retriggered on every new incoming note. So it is reset to the initial state and restarted of the waveform. Above the retrigger, you can select um, corresponding waveform for the LFO via the 
drop-down men menu. So there is a sign, triangle, rectangle, ramp up and ramp down, um, uh, or sawtooth forward as well as backward. A sample and hold random with an abrupt uh, transition from one to the next value, and a smooth sample and hold with soft transitions, so-called glides. The rate knob to the right, as I said, controls the speed, how fast the LFO oscillates. And um, the phase knob determines at uh, which point of the wave the LFO starts. So with phase zero, the waveform starts directly over here. With um, higher phase, it starts a little bit later over here or at the top or here in the middle again or at the bottom and so on and so forth. So um, this can be very important because it determines whether the filter starts open, half open, half closed, closed or uh, with any values in between and thus has a very big influence on the sound. So now about um, the envelope follower. The envelope follower reacts to the amplitude or the volume of a signal. For visual support, I have added an envelope follower modulator, which also displays the signal as a wave. Um, the intensity of the volume is shown here in the upper left corner by the yellow LED over here. You can't hear anything because I switched off the um, volume is just for the visual over here. The two knobs, attack and release, over here, then only determines how fast the cutoff of the filter reacts. So this one. So how fast or slow the filter opens or closes and with the release, how long it takes until the filter is closed or opened again. At this point, I would like to remind you to the input gain, which of course can also have a great influence here. So before we get to the sound examples, one more thing um, for the sake of fairness. If you have watched the video so far, please give it a like and a subscribe to the channel. Thank you. And at this point, I already say goodbye. My name is Odo Zendaidukai. Thanks for watching and paying attention. And if you have any other questions or feedback, just let me know in the comments. I hope um, to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy and save the future. Have fun with the sound examples. Take care. Until then. Ciao, ciao.